Well, welcome everybody. This is um, Glenn, WB6RLC, president of uh, Desert Rats uh, Radio Amateur Transmitting Society. And we're in the uh, two meter bunker for our uh, uh, 146.940 repeater. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, you know, a big bunker up on Edom Hill. And uh, this, is, this is our rack with uh, all the, uh, the two meter gear in it. So, this portion here is our old two meter repeater that was been here probably close to 20 years now. And uh, this panel's just got some connectors behind it, but this is how much area it takes for the old repeater. So it's got a transmitter in here and a receiver and then uh, a controller that uh, decides what's going to be happening, listens for the PL tone, and all of that kind of stuff. And this is how much it takes. And this little piece down here is the uh, bridge comm that we installed uh, oh, about four years ago, maybe five now. And this is all the bigger that it is now. This is the difference in technology. So this has the transmitter, the receiver, uh, the controller, everything is all just in this much rack space. This little bit down here is all that's, uh, all that's all concentrated in one little chunk there. Uh, and that's, that's the new bridge comm. Uh, this is our uh, uh, backup battery. The bridge comm uh, keeps the battery charged and topped up and has the automatic switch over should we lose main power. And then down here is the uh, Astron power supply that powers the, the whole thing. So uh, should we lose power to the Astron, the Bridgecom automatically switches over to battery backup. That's why when power goes down here uh, and we lose television stations and radio stations, uh, our two meter repeater will keep running for probably at least a couple of days. So that's a good thing. Up here on the back, you can see uh, this. You ever wonder how uh, repeaters use one antenna and transmit it at the same time? Well, these are the duplexers here. So uh, one set is receive, and what they are are very finely tuned, uh, very narrow banded uh, filters. So uh, one is a receive set of filters, and the other is a, a transmit set of filters. So they can actually work exactly at the same time on the same repeater, and because of the offset, or the same antenna, uh, because of the offset, then you uh, uh, they can actually work at the same time. So that's how that works. Then this up here is another receive filter, because there's so much RF up here, there's all the transmitter towers and everything else for all the television. Uh, it's just, it's just uh, it, the incredible it's up here, how much RF energy. So this is a kind of a pre-filter, then it goes to the receive filters and then into the, into the bridge comm. The transmit duplexers, uh, the receive duplexers, uh, this is that big filter, and you can see these all have knobs on them, so you can tune them very precisely. And then uh, 
uh, this is another part of the transmit that helps, um, it's called a recirculator, and it helps keep um, RF energy from coming back down the line. So that's pretty much all the business end, and then it goes from here out through all the racks and up about 60 or 70 feet up on the tower uh, to, uh, to the antenna. So that's basically what we have here in this bunker uh, for, uh, for just, just for the two meters. And this is basically how all repeaters work. We're over here in the uh, KRT building owned by Jim Brown who lets us have this rack space here for all of our the two 20 repeater and backup uh, RMS, uh, Windlink, uh, uh, and all of Arden. Uh, everything here is on solar battery backup. So this, this equipment will sustain itself indefinitely with power outage. Um, we'll start here with the Bridgecom radio. Uh, this is the 220 radio. Uh, that is probably the only radio that's going to stay, stay on sustain for our group in a long-term power outage. This is a weather station here that uh, we have stuff on the roof and then that relays data through the Arden back to us on what's going up here weather-wise. This is the circulator for the 220 uh, radio and this protects the front end of the radio from the high RF here on Edom Hill, uh, destroying uh, the radio. This over here on the side, am I going too fast? Is the receive uh, channel filter for uh, the RMS radio, uh, so that I can say again, high RF won't destroy the radio. This is the RMS radio, so it's regular old two meter Yezu. Uh, base mobile rig and this is the signal link for it and uh, we have our own server uh, basically it's a Windows 10 computer for RMS so it will store and pass on traffic as needed so if we get isolated in an event uh, we can pass our own internet traffic and we don't rely on internet but then when internet is up and running Arden which Here's the switching gear for it. Relays that information back to the internet and gets it where it needs to go. And this is the internet server for Arden. This this is the switching gear for all the different nodes. Uh, internet switch. This is the computer for Arden and RMS. This is uh, basically remote disconnect control to all the Arden and RMS equipment so we can power it down, power it back up to reboot. And then we have redundant power supplies, isolated power supplies, so that if one part fails, the other one will still keep some of the equipment running. So it doesn't rely on one source. Mm -hmm. So it was, we, it, we built it in mind that we have something. So if equipment fails, something's still going to work. Right? This is the charging uh, the fuses and the charging controllers for solar battery. Uh, this one's for the 220 repeater, and this is for Arden and the uh, uh, Windlink radio equipment. And these are the batteries. They're 110 amp hour each. Uh, meta, uh, AGM batteries. So this is step up. That takes it up to 24 volts. Arden rather prefers 24 volts than 12 volts. And then, we, and then we have step down, which you can't see, it's back on the rack. Okay. This is the charge controller. Uh, this regulates the charge to the batteries and switches in an event and, and, and so on and so forth. Yes. We also have security camera equipment installed. Uh, we do that for the site owner 
which made him very happy for security reasons, and we can also monitor all of our equipment to know what's going on here. So also we have remote control to fire, uh, uh, shut down equipment or fire it back up in case we have to reboot computers and or camera equipment. We have our own camera system via Arden, which everybody's welcome to use via Arden, uh, that you can control and zoom in and we can monitor anything in the valley out here as far as uh, fire going on, uh, some type of event, we can zoom in on see it. We also have a camera in the Cove in the city on the Arden system, and we have a camera also at the Hyatt, so you can see it's going down Town Palm Springs up on uh, all tied into Arden. And like I said, Arden is the backbone for the internet, and then we inject Arden more, more than one site back to the valley so that if one of us have a failure, it'll just pick up its next source delivery. Uh, duplexer for the 220 radio. And then because of the high RF problems, these are the two channel filters for the 220 computer equipment. Computer uh, repeater equipment is totally isolated electrically. So it's on its own battery, own solar panel, own charge controller, so that we'll have voice communication or pass digital traffic we have to with it. And then, like I said, the Arden, uh, Arden and Windlink is on another set of battery, solar panels, charge controller, so that if we lose one, at least we have something. We're not relying on one charging system or one. Uh, all this was donated to Spacer Force, uh, KRT. Uh, Jim Pram, uh, very nice. Uh, and we do maintenance work here for him to help out with site work or so and so forth repairs. I take care of all his electrical problems here if they need to. Very nice guy to work. So, if you get a chance, thank you. <laughs> uh, that's about it. Uh,